this evening. Would you call the roll, please? Kathy Griffith. Here. Jason Blair. Here. Melissa Hunt. Here. Louis Williams. Here. Adam Webb. Rob Clark. Here. Mark Ham. All right, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time I'd like to ask uh, Danielle McKenzie if she would come up. Uh, we're going to present her with a plaque this evening, recognizing her for her service uh, on the city council from 2016 through 2023. We appreciate your service and, and the joy of just getting to know you. So, Thank you very much. Say something if you want. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure to serve with you all. Um, and it's also been a pleasure to watch you afterwards and kind of watch from the backside. So um, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. All right. Item two is the consent docket. I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent docket items A through F. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Yes. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> item three, item passes. Item three, consider rezoning application number RZ 1044, located in the southwest quarter of section two, township 10 north, range three west, being north of Northeast 27th Street and west of Pole Road from I-1 Light Industrial District to I-1 PU Light Industrial Di District with a permissive use for construction rentals and approve ordinance number 28-24, application by Trey Dupuy. Planning Commission recommended approval 7-0. This is Ward 2. Vice Mayor and Council, uh, this site consists of approximately five acres. It is located east of North I-35 uh, and north of um, Northeast 27th Street. There are currently two properties located at the site. There's the 501 Northeast 27th Street and the 2901 Pole Road. Uh, the property is developed as light industrial. The applicant is not proposing changes to the underlying uses, but is instead asking for a permissive use for construction sales and services, heavy uh, with a proposed use of operating a construction rental company for water pumps, water tanks, and related equipment at 501 Northeast 27th Street, as well as bringing in an existing oil well services business located at 2901 Pole Road into compliance with the zoning code. Uh, the property is currently served by public water and sewer. Access is provided from Northeast 27th Street and Pole Road. Uh, due to the age of this existing development, the stormwater detention is not provided. And because no new development is, uh, is slated to occur, stormwater detention is not required at this time. Uh, the subject site is located in an area which uh, has been industrial in nature for some time. This site at 501 Northeast 27th Street is currently being used by the applicant's business but with smaller equipment that meets the definition of the I-1 zoning designation. Uh, due to the type and size of construction equipment proposed to be stored on the property, the applicant is seeking the permissive use. Uh, the Envision More 2040 plan calls for this location to be light industrial. Light industrial land uses uh, include heavy commercial uses and light industrial development with a separation from residential areas. Uh, this application was reviewed as to its conformance with the plan uh, because this type of use is industrial in nature, an amendment to the comprehensive plan is not necessary. Uh, permissive uses by definition are those that may not be appropriate in all areas within the underlying zoning due to potentially undesirable characteristics that affect uh, sensitive uses. Each permissive use application should be viewed as unique and evaluated on their own individual merits. Uh, this area along Northeast 27th Street is emerging as an industrialized corridor. 
This application will maintain this trend with its industrial nature as well as bring new and existing uses into compliance with the zoning code. Uh, because the original development of the site focused the required landscaping on Northeast 27th Street to act as a buffer for the industrial uses, a permissive use of construction sales and services heavy is not, not anticipated to negatively affect the surrounding area. And staff recommends approval of this application contingent upon replacement of all dead trees and shrubs on the site. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Can you, can you remind me on a permissive use, if they leave the property and somebody else comes in, does that stay in place? Or? That is correct, okay. yes. And so they are already a construction equipment rental company, but they're looking to lease larger pieces of equipment. That's correct. So, that's, okay. so nothing with regard of scope to scope of their business will change. It's just the size of equipment. That's correct. Okay. I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Anyone that would like to speak to the issue? Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item four, consider the final plat of Eagle Lane duplexes located in the southwest quarter of section 22, Township 10 North, Range 3 West, being north of Southwest 19th Street and east of Eagle Drive. Application by Omni Holdings, LLC, Joe Sherga. Planning Commission recommended approval 7-0. This one is in Ward 3. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council, this site is located north of Southwest 19th Street and east of Eagle Drive. It is approximately three acres in size with 10 uh, lots being proposed in two common areas. That results in a density of approximately seven units per acre. The site is zoned R2 as a planned unit development. Uh, the approved PUD does grant reduced lot widths of 60 feet and a maximum coverage of 50% in exchange for the following amenities. Uh, a common area that does not include detention containing a minimum of 9,767 9, square feet, a total of 35 trees provided in the common areas, a approximately 200 square foot uh, uh, park shelter, um, such as a pavilion, with an eight-foot ADA picnic table and a six-foot bench, uh, automatic irrigation system for all required landscaping, residential exterior aesthetics with a minimum of 70% brick rocker stone. Uh, stormwater detention for this development is proposed in one of the common areas to the southwest of the site, and no portion of the property is located within a FEMA floodplain or floodway. Access is provided by Eagle Drive. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the rezoning application um, for the PUD and the preliminary plat for this addition, and the City Council approved both items on June 5th, 2023. The Envision More 2040 plan calls for this location to be urban residential. Uh, land uses in this designation include attached and detached residential units with densities of up to seven units per acre. The application was reviewed as to its conformance with the intent of the plan. And uh, with the land being designated as the urban residential, the preliminary plat, plat does slightly increase the densities from the adjacent single family developments while providing quality open space to offset those densities. Uh, there is a density proposed of seven lots per acre. That does meet the goal and policies of the comprehensive plan. Uh, because the plat is in conformance with the approved preliminary plat, uh, no one amendment to the comprehensive plan is necessary and staff recommends approval of this application if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them so uh, looked on the 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 final plat as you presented it to us i couldn't tell for sure will there be fencing completely around the complex or is it just the fencing that the houses will generate yes it's just the fencing that the houses um the i'm sorry the units would be fenced in from their neighbors, um, but it is not a gated community. Not, okay, all right. And this is that property right behind that church, right? That's correct, okay. yes. Okay, any other questions? I'm just curious, does the back of this property, the east side of the property, is that butt right up to the apartments? It there? does, yes. Okay, perfect. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Call for the vote, please. Melissa Hunt? Yes. 
Bob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Number five, consider adoption <coughs> of resolution number 77-24, removing certain fees no longer being charged, providing for a fee for reasonable and direct costs associated with copying of records, updating fees previously modified by ordinance, updating the application fee in regards to the Board of Adjustments, and updating the commercial waste rates and the senior citizen rates for residential accounts effective upon <coughs> approval and remaining in effect until modified, amended, repealed, and repealing prior inconsistent fees. Vice Mayor and Council, this is uh, an update for our fee schedule. I try to do this about once every year just to update the uh, current fees that we have. Um, the first fee that is uh, changing is um, the public body is allowed to charge for uh, the recovery of reasonable direct cost in copying. Uh, right now we have a spending a lot of time in pre redacting portions of our law enforcement uh, body cams. Uh, they're time sensitive, it takes a long time to do those, uh, and we're allowed to charge for that. So we put down $25 an hour in doing the redactions on that. Um, earlier this year we uh, had an ordinance that uh, uh, change the disposition or surplus of obsolete materials over a thousand dollars when bidding is required this is just updating that that has already been approved before um, the board of adjustment application fee will be changed from 250 to 500 and i also updated the commercial waste rates um, that hasn't been updated since 2021 so you see that there are a lot of changes there as well so all of those are updated um, we recommend approval of this I see the senior um, citizen rate and it says in here annual income of $33,088. I just point that out because I get a lot of calls from senior citizens and they say it should be this matter, it should be this much. And I just wanted to point out that we update it annually based on the cost of a living adjustment, correct? That is correct. Moving forward, yes, that is indicated in there. It is based on the uh, January Consumer Price Index for the South Region as published by the U.S. Bureau of Statistics, and it'll be effective uh, beginning in January of each year. I just want to point out. It'll be arbitrary. automatically adjusted. Right, it's not an arbitrary number. We've actually. That is correct. Right. So, yeah. well, on that number, it, it said at least 33,000? At the, the minimum. Or, I'm sorry, that, that should be at the maximum. The annual income of... 33,088 is the maximum, maximum. amount. Right. Yes. I think we need to fix yeah. the wording Something on that, yeah. if yeah. you would, because I was fixing to apply. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we will make that change. Okay. I make a motion to approve. As amended. As amended. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Call for the vote, please. Bob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item six, consider adoption of resolution number 7824, adopting the schedule of fees and charges effective <coughs> upon approval and remaining in effect until modified, amended, or repealed, and repealing prior inconsistent fees. Vice Mayor Council, this is simply approving, ratifying the entire new fee schedule with these new changes that was just approved. Uh, with the uh, with the modification make a motion to approve second okay we have a motion and a second would you call for the vote please Kathy Griffith yes Jason Blair yes Melissa Hunt yes Rob Clark <coughs> yes Louis Williams yes item passes item seven consider authorizing the budgeted <laughs> purchase of one federal signal 508-128 outdoor warning siren with solar power option, pole, freight, and installation from federal, federal sign safety and security systems in the amount of $32,286.70 utilizing Oklahoma State contract number SW404F. Mayor and Council, good evening. This uh, would approve the purchase of siren number 44. Uh, you approved 43 here a couple of weeks ago and actually it arrived last week. Uh, so we'll, uh, we need to get that installed, uh, but this would be number 44. Uh, it is part of our 10-year uh, plan to add sirens that will eventually replace some of our legacy sirens, uh, which are over 50 years old, but uh, still run great. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. 
believe it is. Yes, item passes. Item eight, consider authorizing the budgeted purchase of 76 body cameras and the associated software and accessories from Motorola Solutions in the amount of $212,803.40 using state contract number SW1053M to be paid annually in the amount of $42,560.68 for a five-year period. Vice Mayor Council, this is uh, upgrading of our body camera system. Our current system is 10 years old. It's reached end of life. Uh, we looked at several different vendors. Uh, we decided to stay with the same system that we have, just take their newer product. It was uh, cost savings, but also didn't sacrifice any um, uses or any, uh, any quality of performance. So we'd recommend approval. Is there anything unique about dividing the, the cost up across five years? Yeah. Uh, it's an easier budgetary for the city manager because he knows a fixed cost over the next yeah. five years uh, when you're so working you don't out, get anything, there's no support or anything like that coming from Motorola or anything? Yeah, Motorola would probably prefer the lump sum payment, but um, they right. will support equally over the five years. Because I mean, it's exactly side. the same amount, so yes, we're not sir. paying any kind of a fee. And so. it doesn't impact our... It doesn't impact our service from Motorola okay. or quality. All right, very good. Thank you. Is or this uh, is this replacing all that you need? Yes, six sir. Six? Yes, sir. We're, we currently carry the Vista camera. It will replace the Vista camera. There will be some portions of the car. So it, because we're keeping the same company, we don't have to change out all the cameras uh, because there's three cameras in the car and then one camera on the officer. And so this, we can just change out the camera and then one piece to the in-car camera systems. Uh, the 76 will provide us enough for SROs, officers working off-duty jobs, on-duty patrols with the overlap shifts, and uh, detectives too that would be wear on when they go out. Very, Very nice. Second. Okay. Who, who, who made the original? Didn't, it, didn't I hear somebody? The first. No, I, I, I thought you I did, did the first. first. Yeah. I seconded my motion. <laughs> that possible? Uh, You're welcome. Well, I'll make the motion. Possible? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I tried. Sorry. Who's willing to second that? Second. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any other questions? <laughs> Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? <coughs> yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Item passes. Uh, consider approval of the FY24-25 contract with the Moore Public School District for the provision of eight uniformed school resource officers and one police vehicle for which the city will receive 65% reimbursement of the officer salary and benefits and 65% of the cost of one vehicle in, a, in an amount not to exceed $624,329.21. Vice Mayor Council, this is our yearly contract with more public schools to provide SROs for the school uh, system. Uh, substantively, it has not changed at all this year. Uh, the price was adjusted for the uh, cost of living increase or the, the merit increase through the collective bargaining unit with the union and the officers. That's the only change in the price. Uh, provisionally, they have mentioned that maybe in next fiscal year they would like to add another SRO to the contract, so to increase to the number to nine, but this year we're staying at eight. And again, substantively in the contract, nothing has changed other than the figures. Recommended approval. Very good. And what schools do, do we know? What schools? <clears throat> I assume they're, I'm sorry. This is right. a test. No, no. But I, I cannot tell you the names of them off the top. No, I, I could probably go down the list of names, sir. Um, but generally speaking, two at each high school, sophomore and more high school, and then one at each junior high, and then there's a roving uh, elementary, and so uh, a full-time roving elementary SRO. What they would like to do next year is have two roving elementary SROs and divide the elementary schools up. Perfect. Do, do you know if Oklahoma City does something similar with the district that runs over there? Um, so they also are at Westmore. And then they are at any junior highs that um, fall in Oklahoma City jurisdiction. I do not think they have a uh, patrolling, uh, a roving elementary SRO, though. Thank you. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 10, consider adopting resolution number 7924 
supporting the appointment of Mark Ham to the District 8 seat on the Board of Directors for the Oklahoma Municipal League, declaring said appointment to be for the benefit of the City of Moore and other municipalities within the district, and declaring the mission of the Oklahoma Municipal League to be this, the public purpose. Vice Mayor, the district and council, the District 8 seat has come open again, and so uh, they're accepting applications. And I, you know, I always believe that it's good if the city of Moore participates and and potentially has a seat on that board. So I support uh, nominating Mayor Ham for one of those positions. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. A motion to second. Call for the vote, please. Rob Clark. Yes. Kathy Griffith. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Item passes. Item 11. Consider authorizing the city manager to begin negotiations on the purchase of 8.3 acres west of Cleveland Heights. Vice Mayor and Council, this is the uh, land that was discussed in the budget hearings and uh, was a uh, part of the $5 million financing that was approved by Council uh, in the last meeting. Recommend approval. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Call for the vote, please. Kathy Griffith. Abstain. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Rob Clark. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Item passes. At this time, we'll recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item 12 is the consent docket. I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve consent docket sub items A and B. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 13, consider adopting resolution number 26724, adopting the schedule of fees and charges effective upon approval and remaining in effect until modified, amended, or repealed, and repealing prior inconsistent fees. Vice Mayor Council, this is simply the same fee schedule that the MPWA would need to ratify. It's the same one that was approved earlier tonight. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Yeah, a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. This time we'll recess the More Public Works Authority meeting and convene the More Risk Management meeting. Item 14 is the consent docket. I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve consent docket A and B. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. At this time, we'll recess the more risk management meeting and reconvene, reconvene the city council meeting. Item 15A is citizens forum for items not on the agenda. I don't have anybody that signed up. Would anybody like to speak? Okay, if not, items from the City Council and Trustees? I'd like to, uh, I'd just like to uh, recognize um, the uh, earlier this month, um, the uh, Police Department and the Fire Department first responders did a training with the school district for um, school shootings. And they uh, used teachers, faculty, staff, and even the, uh, the students to, to help them in the training. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of that and uh, got an opportunity. I thought it was just a great thing that not only was it a, an eye opener and a training for the schools and for those involved, but uh, giving them the opportunity to train them in something that is uh, very important in, in today's world. And uh, I got a chance to see it and it was neat to see the uh, veteran police officers and firemen um, helping the younger ones, you know, the, the, the new ones, and just in their process and, and uh, techniques that they need to be uh, doing. And I just wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, appreciate everything that you guys do. Here, here. Mm -hmm. okay, anyone else? Items from the city or trust manager? Just want to remind everyone that we'll have our fireworks show Thursday at Buck Thomas Park. It's one of the best shows in the state, so I would encourage everyone to attend. Very good. Okay. Item 16 is executive session, section 307, title 25, Oklahoma statutes 
permits the public body to meet in executive session for certain specified reasons under certain specified conditions. It is the opinion of the city attorney that the city council may consider and adopt a, mo a motion to meet in executive session to discuss the following items. Item A, discuss, <coughs> consider, and if deemed appropriate, take possible action regarding Mark, Mayor Mark Ham and his potential dual office holding and authorization for legal counsel and staff to take action as necessary and appropriate in the interest of the city of Moore as authorized by 25 Oklahoma Statute 307B1. Make a motion we convene to executive session. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. We are convened to executive session. Available if needed. Okay.
Oh. Uh, <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> okay. Let the man. I lost my focus there. Let the record show that everybody that was here before is still here. Uh, I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to proceed as directed. Second. Se okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Kathy Griffith? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Rob Clark? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item 17 is adjournment. So moved. Second. Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Rob <coughs> Clark? Yes. Kathy Griffith? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. We are adjourned. Did she call roll call? Is she turned up? Hmm?